in a day's worth of work, we came in, we got the dent shield up, we got the pan floated, we got the drain set, we got the curb set, we got the curdy over it, and we got a coat of eight plus nine. So this is ready to water test in about three or four hours. Okay, so here we're on day two. We got it all torn out. Got our Duroc fiberglass mat board up. This is a waterproof fiberglass mat gypsum product from Duroc. Usually when you use the term Duroc, you think of their cement board, but they actually make a fiberglass mat gypsum waterproof panel. Uh, we really like this for our, behind our showers, especially when we float. Okay, so now we got our, our floor prepped out. We got it grinded down good, and it's time to put our, our new curdy flange back in here. So we got our two inch ABS stub out here, and we got the height about where we want it to be. I usually want to be within one to two inches. You don't want it too high because it'll raise, raise your floor height too high. You don't want it too low where you don't have mud supporting it underneath. And then you, don't, you, you want to have plenty of working room to build and slope your, your mud pan. One thing that's important is to get these level. You don't ever want these kicked uh, because everything needs to drain properly into this flange. So here on the west coast, we use ABS. Lots of other parts of the country use PVC. So the PVC drains are gray. They're like a light gray color. ABS drains are black. Usually PVC pipe is white and ABS pipe is black. So we use ABS cement. And I'm gonna get two coats on here. I always do a coat of cement on the pipe itself and the inside of the coupling. So I'm going to go ahead and set this in and you have a few seconds to work with it so I want to make sure that I get my my drain where I want it to be. Let's see if I can see if it'll want to stick. I'm going to kind of try to hold it in place so that we get it right where we want it. That's about right. So the glue is setting up as, I, as I'm pr putting pressure on it. The glue is setting up, getting harder and harder. And I probably only have about five more seconds left before this is all the way, all the way done. So you can see here now, now it wants to stay level. We should be level all the way around. Maybe a little more on there. How are we doing there? good there and we're good there so I got my my drain in here level a lot of guys like to push this down into the mud but I find it really messy because if you have your mud around here and you're trying to use glue and put it all down it just doesn't work as good for me I like to get the drain set then I'll pack my mud in really tight under this and I know my drain is already level I don't need to mess with it the pipe is holding it in place and this might also be different if you're doing it on a raised foundation where your pipe is just supported by straps. You know, you got your underneath all this, you got your ABS pipe and then it goes into a trap. Well, in concrete and this thing's underground, so that pipe doesn't have any give. It's it's solid. But when you have it on a raised foundation or a crawl space or a second story, that pipe might have some play and you might need to use your mud to get everything where you want it to be. But this is, this is holding, you can see now that ABS cement is really set up and this thing doesn't want to move. It still has a little flex on the outside, but as far as where the pipe is, it's not going to want to move. Once I get my mud in here, it's really going to want to stay where it's at. So, Okay, so I'm going to mix some mud to pack in around my flange. When I need a fast setting mortar, I love to use this rapid set mortar mix. Now this stuff dries super hard but it dries super fast. I mean, you probably have like, you probably have about 10 minutes of working time with it from the time it's really loose to the time it's stiff enough to where it's starting to get hard. You really need to work fast, work up small little batches. So it works good for repairs, stucco repairs. I like to use it on the shower pans there because it's gonna really firm up around that drain flange and make it so there's no flex at all when I'm screeding off of it.
Okay, so you can see the consistency that I got it. It's actually runny. When you mix this type of mortar up, you got to mix it up really loose because honestly, by the time I get in there and start working, after it slacks for about five minutes, the stuff will be about perfect. And then again, I'll have about 10 or 15 minutes to work with it. So mix it up loose for sure. Came in the room. It's probably been three minutes since I mixed this. And you can see how the consistency has changed. It's just about perfect. So you can see I'm packing as much mud as it can feed in underneath. I want this fully supported, all of this plastic I want to have supported. So yeah, this mud is already starting to set up. It's already starting to firm up. So I'm going to do one last little check on my, on my drain here. So that's how you set a, a curdy flange. Today I'm going to be using a foam curb. I like to make my curbs out of two inch curdy board. You can buy them pre-made. They're more expensive. You get a lot more if you just buy two inch curdy board. And I use my table saw and rip them down into nice straight clean pieces. You can see how nice the cut is on them. They're not, so they're, they're not scored up and chipped up and rough. Table saw I'll cut it perfectly straight and give you a really nice cut. So I got these made and I'm actually going to glue these two together. And then I put a piece of half inch hardy backer or cement board, whatever you got on the top of it. That firms up the top of the curb so that any point load that's too, that's too much for the uh, foam will be taken by the hardy backer and if a shower door guy wants to anchor a door into it at least he has something to anchor into so what I'll do first is I'm gonna put the two pieces together so I have a joint sealant uh, this is basically curdy fix it's a silane based sealant this is hydro blocks I just get it because it's cheaper from them but basically the same stuff I'm just going to put a nice bead on here. You can also make these uh, beforehand. A lot of times I'll make up uh, you know, three or four curbs so I have them just in the shop ready to go. That way you don't have to make them on site. Just make them all five feet. Most of our showers are five feet wide or shorter. So I just make up a bunch of them. So that's going to stick together really well and then my curb is going to sit like here. I'll get my measurements to make sure they're good. I also want to check level to make sure I'm going to be within tolerance and yeah I'm level so 
The thing about using sealant, I wouldn't want to use sealant on the bottom if my subfloor was way out of level because you don't want to be building up with this. In that case, I would just use thin set. I like to use this sealant whenever I can. It's really strong. This silane based sealant is the same stuff that Weedy uses, same stuff that's Curdy Fix. It cures with the humidity in the air. It doesn't break down like polyurethane does. Really good stuff. I'll put a really nice bead on the floor. And our floor's been prepped. You see we took a grinder to it to get off any of the, the old tar from the hot mop. So I'm gonna just take this. And I'm going to kind of loosely embed it. I want to make sure that I got good bond. Double check that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't want to come up now. That baby is in there. So that's in there good. Now I want to make sure that I do have a line from the previous shower, but I'm just going to double check to make sure I'm square off the walls. 30 and 3 eighths on that side. 30 and 3 eighths on this side. So make sure that you're square off your back wall for your curb. Last thing I'm going to do is put a little sealant in the edges to hold it. this way. You might want to put a little pitch on it going this way, uh, but I mean it's so minimal. Quarter inch a foot of slope over four inches is like nothing. It's less than a sixteenth of an inch. So Square, straight, level. There we go. Yeah, we're good. So, I got the curb in. Next thing I'm going to do is float this pan. Okay, so we're ready to float this pan, get the mud down. Our curb, like I said, this rapid set sets up really hard so my flange isn't going to move uh, while I'm floating. Uh, to get my slope right, I have two feet at the far ends, so I need to be two, a half inch higher. That's a quarter inch per foot of slope that I need at my farthest points. It's going to be a little more as I get shorter, but I'm going to do a level perimeter and then slope it down into this drain. So when you're on a slab, I like to bond my mud bed to the slab itself. So I use thin set, and this is just called a slurry coat. It's a real loose thin set. This is a modified, this is Art XX5, but it doesn't really matter. You could even use an unmodified, real cheap thin set. It's basically just gonna, gonna bond the deck mud to the slab. Since this mud, I don't want a cold joint here, I'm actually gonna put thin set up on here too, so that it bonds, my deck mud bonds to that as well. Okay, so this is ready to go. Oh, I got my deck mud. Okay, so I'm just getting uh, deck mud in here. And covering up, I want to cover up my slurry as quick as possible so that that slurry coat doesn't, uh, doesn't skim over. When it's still wet, it'll create a really good bond. So I'll just take this, this mud, and I'm just gonna kind of get it, move it around and kind of get it in place about to where I'm gonna need it. I'll go around the drain and again, get 
Get my mud packed in against the drain, against the thin set. So that, that that bonds really good to the to the thin set. Get everything covered up. So everything's gonna bond really good now. So remember I said I need a quarter inch per foot. I'm gonna take my two foot level and get my slope going. That right there is about an inch, which would be a half inch per foot. So I'm actually going to see what that does there. Five eighths right there, which is good. I'm going to do that. It's a little more than a quarter inch per foot but I have a little bit farther. I got about three inches. So by the time I got to that corner, that would be a quarter inch. So this point right here, I can level off the rest of it. One key to having good deck mud or dry pack is to not have too much water in it. I see a lot of people and they, they get it too wet. Uh, you want it pretty dry. And also when I'm making my screen lines and everything, don't pack it down too tightly. I know the, the tendency is, is you really want to, you think it's going to be stronger if you really pack it in tight. What happens is, is when you jar it and hit it as hard as you can, I think it actually kind of breaks up the mud a little bit. And when you come back the next day, it'll flake off, especially on the top layer. And I get that question a lot from you guys. And thanks again for emailing me. I really appreciate all the emails. All the ways you guys reach out to me when you find me on Instagram at Tile Coach, you ask me these questions, and that's one of the main questions I get. Why does my deck mud, why does my dry pack always flake off and slough off the next day? And that's usually the reason. It's because you pack it down too hard and it kind of breaks up the continuity of the mud. So just when you when you're moving it around like I am, I'm just I'm just moving it. I'm not really packing it. I'm just kind of getting the mud about where I want it. Okay, so you can see my original mark in the mud and it runs right here. I'm leveling off of that point, just tamping the mud down with my, with my rubber mallet and take it all the way to the corner. So now, now I'm level back here and what I'll do is I'll just run a perimeter off of this point. Let me just double check. Yep, that's right where I wanna be. So I'm going to run that all the way around the perimeter using my levels. And then once I have these, you can see how when you tamp your level into the mud, it leaves a nice indention. Can you see that, Ronnie? Mm -hmm. it leaves a real nice indention. And that way you can work off of it and leave your mud up a little bit higher than that indention. So when you pack it down, it's the same height as that. So uh, yeah, you'll have your mud just up a little bit higher like that. And then when you go to pack your mud down, it'll tamp down to that level. Got the three sides done. I got those all level. So this side should match up with this side. And if it doesn't, it means my perimeter's out of level. It's actually good. It's perfect. So now that I have my perimeter, all I, all I need to do is, is uh, fill in. So you can see now how I left my mud up higher than the perimeter. And so I'm just going to start tamping it down. And again, you see I'm not, I'm not killing it. I'm just giving it a nice firm tamp. And those who question me and think that this might not dry hard enough, believe me, when you uh, if you try to tear this out after it's cured, it's it's 
it's in there, man. It is tight. Again, if you start packing this down too tight, it's a lot harder to shape. You don't want to lose sight of your perimeter line. While I'm doing this tamping, I'm not, I'm not getting super close to, to my perimeter line. I'm staying back just a little bit. You can see. Because I don't want to lose it. Once you lose that, you lose all reference. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can slope the pan. You can use levels, um, you can use sticks. A lot of times I'll use a redwood stick, but if you can use straight edges, you can use levels. And I just start in the corner. And I do like a point to point there. I'll come over here and do a point to point here. And then I'll start working it. Like if I want to use this level now, then I can do Do a point to point there. But what I, I mean, I like to use, I can kind of do it free form. Once I get some references like that, you can just start shaping it. Have your trowel going. And you can see the reference lines, even as I'm I'm working this, I can still see these lines embedded. It's faint, but you can see it. And that's what I'm working off of. And I like to work in circles with my wood float. Instead of dragging, it just seems, now I'm putting, I'm putting firm pressure down on it and rubbing it. And as I edge my perimeter, I'm being real careful not to dig into it. down a little tighter in there. Let's see how I kind of do that. I'm going to jump in here and do the same thing over here. Just kind of connecting the dots. I have, a, I have the, the pathway and I'm just kind of following it. And your trowel will also tell you, and clean off your wood floats often. You don't want that cement on there because it'll start dragging the mud. Um, your trowel will tell you when you hit a high spot, it'll, it'll start digging in. So you just feather it. So even if I get mud on my perimeter line, you can usually just kind of feather it away. Even with your flat trowel, just kind of go like that and you'll be able to see it again. Now I can be a little more aggressive with my packing. But if I were to pack the heck out of it and then try to rub it with my float, it, it wouldn't work that way. It would crumble up and I'd end up with voids. This way I end up with it nice and smooth and the mud about where I want it to be. So I'm going to do this, the same thing with these sides. And I don't want to lose my line. So now I have this point and that point, and again, I'm just going to 
pack it down a, a bit. I'm gonna start shaving it away. And you can always take off more. So do it, do it in little, little increments. Don't be too aggressive with your wood float. Do it in little increments. See how I lost my line and then I'm able to find it again just by doing that? And how nice it is to have this flange firmly embedded in that mortar because it's not moving at all and I can screed right off the top of it. I'll do this last little side and then I just got to do the same on there. So again, just keep your wood float clean. So you see there again I'm not I'm not just hammering it I'm just tamping it So that's about where I want it to be. Again, your level, your, your wood float, see how it, it wanted to dig in right there? I know it's a little high spot, so I'll just shape it. It, it takes a bit of touch. You just don't want to be really digging at it. You just let your trowel almost just create you a nice, even, smooth, consistent slope. See how my trowel will run back and forth without digging too much out? So I really like how that is. I mean, that's, that's good for the wood float. Again, I'm gonna go over it and finish it with my steel trowel. So yeah, all, all I need to do is do the same thing to this side and we'll be on to the next step. Okay, I'm double checking my slope here and I have, uh, be, I have almost three quarters of it three quarters, which is fine. Uh, TCNA recommends between a quarter inch and a half inch per foot of slope, so I'm right in there. But yeah, it's good to double check before you do your finish because uh, I could still shave some off if I wanted to, uh, but I'm good, I'm happy with where we're at. And so basically all I'm doing here is cleaning up my float. You want a nice, nice finishing trowel. Uh, make sure make sure you don't have a, a convex trowel. Make sure it's concave for finishing concrete and plaster. But yeah, I'm just gonna take take my trowel and smooth everything out. So what this is doing, it's firming up my top layer and making it really strong. so that all the grains of sand are embedded with each other. And that's why we like to use coarse sand for our deck mud, because it, it interlocks with itself. And you can see, after I put my finish on it, you could, I mean, it's, it's like a baby's butt there. Look how smooth that is. Really nice mortar bed there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do the same all the way around. Again, I'm putting the pressure on the back edge of the trowel. 
if you if you put pressure even or on the leading edge, it's going to dig into your mud. Okay, so we got a beautiful mortar bed down. This deck float is looking really good, really nice, really flat. And when we finished it up, we finished it up and we went and took a lunch break and put a fan on it just to get it to start firming up. And then what we're gonna do is actually, I'm gonna put my curdy on it like this. And I, I don't recommend, if you haven't done this before, if you're a beginner, do not try to do this because you'll screw it up. But I've been doing this a while and I know how to mix my mud and I've actually set a lot of tile on fresh deck mud like this. Uh, when we did the old traditional pans, we would actually set our tile right to it. And the key is to having loose thin set. I tell people mix it to like a pancake batter consistency and then it's the way you work the trowel. You can't just pick it up or else it'll pull all the deck mud up. So don't try this if you haven't tried it. Uh, if, if you're new at this, just let this dry, come back the next day and you won't fight it. But um, we still have half a day left and so I'm going to take advantage and go ahead and get the rest of the curdy down. So this is Art XX5. The nice thing about lightweight thin sets is you can mix them loose and they'll still have body to them. Like this is a real loose mix but it it still holds a trowel. So the key is is to getting enough thin set down uh, where you're always moving the trowel around. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. I want to get all my mud down that I'm going to use. Okay, so I'm going to spread my mud out. And again, I'm not going to lift up. I don't want to lift my mud up. I always want to be moving into another spot of thin set. So as I trowel, you can see I'm just, this is really gingerly moving it around. And where I stop, you see where I stop my trowel? I'm not stopping it out here, I'm stopping it where there's mud to pick up. And I'm just being really soft getting, a, getting my main layer down. The other thing I did too, is I vacuumed out all of the holes in the Schluter flange on the outside so that my thin set really keys into the mortar underneath it, locking this flange in here. See, there is a little rock of deck mud, but again, that's not a big deal because I can just comb it out. It just becomes part of it. See, I'm just getting my mud to where I want it. Careful not to pick up my trowel in the deck mud. I'm trying to make continuous strokes to where there's already thin set and it won't want to lift up on you. So once you got your thin set all down, obviously I got too much down there, more than I want, and now I can start troweling it out. And then try to pick it up. And the hard thing about thin set when it's loose is it doesn't want to pick up off, off, the, off the floor on the trowel. So just take little bits at a time. And that's the nice thing about using sheet membranes like Curdy or whatever you want to use. I'm setting on a fresh bed of mortar. If you want, if you're going with the roll-on waterproofing, like Redguard, Hydroban, Hydroban wants actually a three-day cure on their mortar bed before you put it over. I'm immediately in the same day putting my waterproofing on. Same hour. Same hour, yeah. So this is basically going to make my deck mud, my thin set, my curdy all one unit because they're, they're all done at the same time. So yeah, in the old traditional methods, you can see how we could set a mosaic tile right on a fresh mud bed. So I got this pre-cut. This is the right size. So 
I can start in one corner. It's going to stay square on the curb. Squeezing out all the air bubbles as I go. I actually like to use my hand. I know uh, I use trowels when I do the final, but I like to use my hand because I can really feel the slope of the pan and I can really squeeze out any air bubbles working from inside to the outer corners. way and that mud is still pretty soft so I don't want to put a lot of pressure in one area just smoothing it all out same thing here smooth it out into the corner Yeah, you can really feel, if you get an air bubble, you can really feel it with your, with your hand. Whereas with the, with the trowel, you can't really feel that. Okay, so now that I got it laying pretty much flat where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and take my 6 inch knife and do the same thing, just work inside out. Now I'm getting any of those air bubbles extra thin set out so it's going to lay really nice. You can see that I work from the end points to the outer edge. Okay, so I'm really happy with that. I'm going to cut my center circle out to make sure I got a good bond in here. And uh, we'll be ready for the rest of the waterproofing. Actually, yeah. Okay, so when you're doing uh, putting anything on hardy backer, it's important to get it wet because hardy backer is porous. Uh, <clears throat> might not be common knowledge, but it contains cellulose fiber, and it is porous. It is not waterproof, and it will actually deteriorate over time underwater. For what we're using it for, that doesn't matter because we're covering it with curdy but you want it to drink up some water before you put the thin set on there so that it doesn't suck out the moisture in the thin set too quickly and you might be wondering why I didn't wrap the sheet of curdy up and over uh, when when you try to wrap curdy up and over a curb I've noticed that it wants to bubble 
Curdy works a lot better if it's done in full sheets and full sections and then banded in the corners. When you wrap it up, you can usually wrap it up a wall fine, but for some reason, going up and over a curb like this, you usually end up with air pockets and voids and bubbles. So I like to do it in, in strips of curdy and then use the band. And what I also do is I have preformed this curb top piece. See, it's pre-folded. That's going to hold a lot better. Turn up the crease. I actually cut it too long on the inside, so I'm going to have to cut that. That little fold's not a big deal there. So I'm actually going to have to cut a little bit off. The nice thing about Curdy and most of these other ones, they have lines on them. So as long as you're square. See how nice the uh, curdy lays when you pre-fold it. There's no bubble, no ridge right there. I really like to pre-fold everything. Perfect. Yeah, so it's really nice having these lines as a guide. Now I have a nice tight wrap on my curb as opposed to if I would have tried to roll this up and over, I would have ended up with a bubble here, bubble here, bubble here. It just does not want to lay flat over an outside corner. Inside corners it seems to do pretty well, but not outside corners. Okay, so I got the floor in, I got the curb wrap. Okay, so the first thing I do is I get my corners in first. That, that gives you, once you get your corners in, then you can really see how long each band needs to be cut without going over. So, so I'm just kind of embedding these in here, placing them in by hand, and I'm gonna trail them out here in a little bit. But I wanna get them stuck and not moving around so much. All the air out of them, but they're not really pushed down. Okay, so now I can measure for my band. I'm gonna measure from this point here to this point here. I don't wanna go all the way to the corner. These corners aren't meant for you to lay your band all the way over them. You're just supposed to go to that inside corner, not go past it, otherwise you'll end up with a lot of buildup. So you want to run your band just to the inside of that corner. It's always nice to uh, pre-crease your band before you put it on. So I'm going to go ahead and just stick it where I know it needs to go. And again, kind of loosely lay it in there. But I know I'm not going too far on one side. So now I can use my trowels to smash that all down. Actually no, so getting that loosely laid, where's uh, give me my shoulders. Got my shorties the right length. And 
and I'm getting it on there, covering up my thin set so it doesn't skim over. So now that I got my band all where I want it to be, now I can start really embedding it in to where I need it. If you got a crease somewhere, it's because your you're not your band isn't square somewhere, so you might need to adjust it if that's the case. Remember I didn't I didn't really embed my corners in, I just kind of placed them in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and really use some force to mechanically key those corners in as I do the rest of the band. Sometimes you get into a place where two trowels will work. You use one trowel to hold the band and the other one to squeeze the thin set out. Then I can do that and then squeeze all my thin set up. See how keyed in that is? That's, that's how you want everything to look like that. As much of the thin set squeezed out as possible. That does two things. It eliminates buildup, minimizes buildup, but also Curdy is meant to work with the least amount of thin set under as possible. You want full coverage under it, but you don't want a lot of thin set because water can wick underneath it. So I'll just do the rest of this and then we'll be ready to move on. All right, so we got all of our curdy up. We got the pan completely done. We got it cleaned up really nice. Got band in the corners and all the seams. Uh, so you can actually, so with curdy, you can actually stop right here. This is the way most installations are done, albeit they would put felt all the way up the walls. But since my board is waterproof, I don't need to do that. So, but what I do like to do, I like to go above and beyond and use Artex 8 plus 9 over everything here. So I'm going to go ahead and get going on that. I'm just going to hit the critical areas, which is about 10 inches up off the curb in the pan. And then I'll hit all of my screw holes in my board and we'll be good. So I got it, the 8 plus 9 mixed up. We're ready to go. Another thing that I talked about that I wanted to do was get I want to get my 8 plus 9 all the way into the PVC part of the drain. So I'm sealing this all up real well and I'm actually overlapping it to where it's bonding to the PVC so that this is all encapsulated. There's nowhere for moisture to migrate up in and under anything. I just feel really good about this, this type of install. And see, this is the thing about Curdy that I worry about. If you look in here, Ron, I don't know if you can get the angle, but here's an example of a corner and a little crease right here that has a little void. And that's the type of stuff that I like to get embedded, get the Artex 8 plus 9 in there, and really seal it up. All these corners you can seal up really well, so there's no places where any water could go through. See there's another one you can see right here. Even I got this outside corner perfectly folded in there. There's always little creases like that where there's a little opening. So if I have eight plus nine, I can just go over it 
kind of pack that in there. And then I know that hole is sealed up. Rolling. All right, so we got our eight plus nine. I actually went over everything. We mixed up a little too much and you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Like if I'm setting tile and I got more mud, I'll just keep going until the mud's gone. That's how I usually know when I got to finish is how much mud do I have left. So we had enough. I just went ahead and coated everything. Everything has a really nice coat. It's all solid. It's, this is going to be a completely waterproof shower. Schluter has actually changed their wording on their systems. They call it water management because Thinset isn't waterproof and that's what's used in bonding the seams together. So this isn't just a water management system. This is a waterproof shower once you put the eight plus nine on there. So I'm feeling really good about this. So in a day's worth of work, we came in, we got the dent shield up. We got the pan floated, we got the drain set, we got the curb set, we got the curdy over it, and we got a coat of eight plus nine. So this is ready to water test in about three or four hours. It's about three o'clock right now. I feel really good about what we got today. I've been walking around with a little pep in my step. A lot of times I'm just in the office pushing papers, doing bids, paperwork, all that stuff. I really enjoy getting out when I get to do this work. I have a lot of fun and if you are unhappy with your job, if you're doing a job you're not feeling fulfilled, check out getting into the building trades, no matter how old you are, but especially if you're younger, you're in your 20s, you can't figure out what to do, think about getting into the building trades. Leave your comments in the section below. Let's start networking. Let's find you a tile pro or a kitchen and bath remodeling pro, hook you up with them. I highly suggest that you get with somebody who has a lot of experience. So that way you don't have to do things the hard way like I do sometimes and have to repair your own work. It's a lot easier to learn from somebody else. So let's network, let's find you a job because I really feel good. Like after a day's work like today, I'm gonna walk out of here. It's Friday, I'm feeling really good. I'm gonna go home to my wife in a good mood, feeling like I accomplished something. So anyways, I love you. I love being your tile coach and we'll see you on the next video.